again, get the missus kids, get your, get your mates, get all your mates, just load them up on the back. And what you want to do is squat the rear until... Welcome back. Based on the last video, it seems uh, a lot of you could do with a bit of a confidence boost to even get some tools out and work on your bike. Setting it up's one thing, but just having the confidence to put a tool to your bike. Straight into one of the more misunderstood and, and possibly the most important two bolts on the front end of your bike, and that's the pinch bolts on the fork leg. And where a lot of people can get these wrong, it's not so much tightening, under tightening, over tightening, it's actually ensuring that the, the in, inner fork leg is in its most relaxed central position, right? Look at how much this can float. Look, look at the difference in position that that fork leg could end up at. You should check this. If you've just had a new tire put on your bike from the local bike shop, you owe it to yourself to check this because they've had little Johnny Apprentice, uh, Friday Arvo, he's in a rush. He's just thinking about, you know, what pickup line he's gonna pull on the chick at the drive-through at Macca's. He's not, he doesn't care about the action of your fork. So, quick way to sort this out is just get, Undo the bolts first. Get a little flathead screwdriver. Just gently tap it in, very gently. And you can see how free that fork is now. And the best way to centralize it, to ensure that that center axis, because what, what you don't want happening is the bushes binding in the fork. You want that to telescope perfectly true and not go in at an angle or try to go in at an angle. You're just wearing stuff out. Tap your little flat head in there, grab the front brake and just compress your front end. Compress it a few times. So what that's actually doing is as the, as the inner fork is telescoping, it's separating the distance of the two bushes. And the further those two bushes are apart, the more central the foot of your fork leg will end up, right? So as it relaxes back, it's on a true perfect plane. Pull your screwdriver out, pinch bolts. A very important one with pinch bolts. Don't just do one all the way up and then go across and do the other one all the way up. Because what you'll find is, if you, you know, watch this. I do that one up really tight. This one, it, look, this one is now loose. I had that tight. So what you want to do is, Start even, just eye up the gap in the actual clamp and just do quarter of a turn, quarter of a turn, quarter, not even a quarter of a turn, eighth of a turn, eighth of a turn. And just by hand with a T-bar, boom, boom. Or a little spanner, we don't all have torque wrenches on hand. Just the length of a 10 mil spanner by hand is plenty of torque. But the main thing is to get them even because you think you've done up both and in over tightening one, you'll just loosen the other. Right, that's it. Your front end's good to go. Just keep an eye on where the axle sits after you've done that little cent centering process because then you'll always know. You'll pick it. You'll pick it on your mate's bike. It's like, oh, your axle's poking through. That fork must be terrible. It is actually. Okay, next in line, triple clamp bolts. And the most important thing uh, you can do with these suckers is loosen them after a fall. The best thing you can do is after a crash and your wheel's not straight is back these off, okay? If you just crack these, okay, just crack them. Just leave a little bit of tension on the very top one and that'll stop your whole front end going through the fork. Nine times out of ten, when you crack those, the wheel will center itself pretty close. The rest, you just grip it with your knees and turn. Look at how much movement that is. Can you see all that movement and the wheels not even moving? But the fork legs are doing this and they can do it because they're allowed to turn in the clamp, all right? So that's the best way to center your front end is to try. And you know, you can do this on the side of the track. You can check it most of the time by looking down. You can see the fork legs, see your axle. The best way is when you're riding here over the front. I'm happy with that. When you're in the bush, just nip things up. 
you, you, you'll get this feel like there's not much leverage there okay so I'm not over tightening anything you don't want to over tighten anything but that will let me finish the day's ride and then get your torque wrench out in the shed at home now I just this is really important because a lot of people get this so wrong and in trying to achieve enough pressure to hold the bars in position if you're not aware of the actual profile of the bar clamp itself you could put huge stress on the bolts and the clamp and not even get the desired clamping effect. Now let me just explain what I'm talking about. The majority of pretty much every good bar clamp available, now you need to look at this, it's pretty obvious, really obvious with um, the T7, but some of these clamps are a lot less obvious. Look at the thickness of, let's just call it the platform, this end, and let's call this end the clamping side. There's a big difference. So. That platform end, I always put it to the top. There's a little dot, I just put the dot to the top. Always put that one in first. In doing it this way, it doesn't need huge pressure, okay? So you can literally just nip it, just a nip. It's like that, done. Now, the clamping. This is where the power comes into it because you have the spring tension of that clamp perfectly going around the bar now and it can close this gap and it doesn't have to be much. Now you've got it. About four of those little dick dick dick. Here the, the aluminium bind. I do about four of those. And again, look, look at my leverage. It's not much. So I'm not going to overdo it or snap anything. Done. Same thing again with the brake. Exactly the same concept. Okay. I would be inclined check all this because some people are heavy handed at you know dealerships bike assembly just back it all off so you can you know you want to be able to move that do up the top one which is your platform let's call it so lock that off with a little nip and then the actual clamp I'm just gonna go one two that's it because ultimately you want to be able to move it see that I can actually move it that's an ideal tension because it's never going to move while you're riding. But if you bin it, you've got a lot less chance of snapping your lever. And the main thing, you've got a lot less chance of breaking your master cylinder. That's big bucks. This is a really important one and something that I reckon a lot of people wouldn't be aware of. And that is de-stressing um, a system. What I'm talking about de-stressing is actually there's an order in which bolts should be done up to alleviate the stress and the loading and prevent cracking. The difference between that bike and that bike, this one cracked its exhaust in a thousand Ks, this one hasn't cracked after 10,000 Ks. And I guarantee the main reason is because of the way it was done up. Let me explain something. The most important part of, of your exhaust is sealing at the headers. So the headers are priority. The two header flanges in there, there's four bolts. Before anything else is done up or touched, you want to do those up and let those header pipes relax against the cylinder perfectly. What you can do to ensure that the whole system has been, you know, relaxed and not, not, not been bound under tension. So what you want to do when you're mounting the muffler is get it on line up the bolt get that bolt started once you get that lined up start it just run it get the whole system warm that's loose that's loose but in as you've run it you've got it hot it's relaxed in its position it's rattled it's revved it's exactly where it wants to be then you lock off the clamp you want to you want to bind that as one and once that is bound and relaxed in its position finish off by doing up the muffler bolt. So that's your priority. Headers, clamp, muffler bolt. If this has just been thrown together, like quick bolt it up, makes it, oh quick, oh, you forgot to do up the headers, do them up. Something's gonna crack. You're either gonna crack the header at the top there, or you're gonna crack a mount here, or it's gonna crack around the hottest point there. So longevity of your components 
can be determined by how in which order they've been bolted up. Now what you have to understand with chain tension is this. The only reason we need it is because the swing arm pivot is independent of the counter shaft sprocket. Okay and so as the rear wheel travels through its arc it's changing the tension of the chain relative to these two axes. Let's just draw an imaginary line, okay? We've got the counter shaft sprocket, the swing arm pivot, and the rear axle. When they are all on the same axis, that is the longest distance between the two points, okay? Between the counter shaft and the rear axle. And that is where your tension is at its most tightest. And the reason you need slack in the chain is to ensure that as the rear axle, as the sprocket passes through that center line, there's enough slack there so the chain doesn't just go snap. If you've over tightened your chain while the sprocket's in the relaxed position, that's fine, you can ride off. But as soon as you hit a jump and land or compress the shock, you are gonna put unbelievable loads on the chain, counter shaft sprocket, gearbox bearings, everything. It's destructive. So, if you don't know what your chain tension's meant to be, if you don't trust old mate down the road, or you've just had so much misinformation to suit your bike, this is the one method that will clear everything. We just get a ratchet strap, find a little clean path that you're not gonna damage anything. What I'm achieving with this ratchet strap is simply squatting the rear. So, Again, get the missus kids, get your, get your mates, get all your mates, just load them up on the back. And what you wanna do is squat the rear until that is all on the same axis. The rear axle, the swing arm pivot, and the front sprocket are all on the same line, the dead straight axis. So just compress the rear. That there is the exact axis, right? So it's at that point you, you, I can now go ahead and adjust my chain to whatever tension I like. And now that I've got it at that point, I can see that my chain needs adjusting. It's super loose. I can, I can literally tighten that more to almost a bar tight, knowing that it'll never go any tighter. It's always good at that most extreme axis for off-road riding to have at least, you know, 10 to 15 mil of play in the chain, just for mud. If you don't have enough free play there, even at that point, if this chain gets covered in mud and you're pushing through, you know, real shitty conditions, sand even, sand is just getting in there when you're riding in sand, um, you'll massively, it, the chain will just stretch until it gets, um, until all the tension's gone. So you might as well have it adjusted to the right tension. So that's, um, I, can, I can adjust that a bit more. But there you go. Going up, it gets looser. Going back, it gets looser. But as it, as it passes through that perfectly center axis, that's when your chain's at its tightest point. And that's what you would need to adjust slack for. It's really hard if you can't afford for every move you make to take your bike to a dealership and you're at the mercy of whatever they charge to do whatever they do. Uh, and a lot of the stuff, you can really just do by yourself and learn to do it and learn to to look for the things that are wearing out coming loose preventative maintenance you know like grab a beer grab a glass of red just get a few tools and just tinker with some stuff adjust some things it's not that intimidating they're built very logically very cleverly um, and you know once you get a feel just just start with take your seat off and have a look you can't you're not going to damage the bike by taking the seat on and off just take it off adjust your bars look at my previous videos um, tinker you know and you'll the more it, it, it just all comes back to that familiarity with your machine uh, and if you're you know if you're an off-road rider an adventure bike rider you should know this. There is a bare minimum that you need to know because even if you're not camping or whatever, you are going between two points where you're gonna be remote. And if you've got a little bit of know-how and confidence to work on your bike, you'll go even more remote. 
you know. One thing feeds the other. Um, you've bought the bike, make it yours. Uh, sure, if you've got the money and you can't be bothered, take it to the dealership. But just know that they're not always that good, you know. Like, they're rushing, they're under pressure, they got, they got to make money. So the easy jobs, they're just churning them out. They're not caring about your bike, your pride and joy, like you can. You know where the subscribe button is. Uh, there should be a join button too if you've got a few bucks extra a month you want to support the channel and help me start to do get closer to doing this full time. But um, for now, yeah, I'm doing what I can to keep the uploads happening once a week. Cheers.